big thank you to the guys at We Are Stoke for sponsoring my match day vlogs throughout the season. For the latest Stoke City news, be sure to check them out on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Links in the description. Hey up guys, Harvey SFC and welcome to the Christmas special of the Harvey SFC podcast. We're joined by Ben from the YYY Files. Say hello, Ben. Hello, mate. How are you doing? I'm feeling very festive today, as you can I see. I can see. Hat on. Um, I was going to try and get some snow effects for the Bet365, but unfortunately that's oh, not possible. Um, so yeah, Christmas Day special. Just going to be an hour just talking about the year previewing games, reviewing games, etc, etc. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be nice and laid back. So, we lost to Tottenham on Wednesday. Yeah. But I think for a 3-1 loss, I think we played really well. Hmm. It's difficult, isn't it? Because I think first half, a lot of people would, would have said that we defended well, apart from the goal on the whole. Um, and up top, we were dead weak. I yeah. think we were a little bit better when Fletcher came on. But with the amount of injuries that we have, I've got to excuse the guys. You know, our midfield is torn to shreds. Jordan Cousins has been doing well. But for me, there are more effective players in this team when going forward. Um, Jordan Thompson is doing all right. Nick Powell, bless him, is still doing really well, even though he gets clattered every five minutes by the opposition. Um, it's it's tough for the guys up top, I think. Um and it's even tougher for the guys in, in the defence too, with the amount of injuries they've had. The goalkeeping situation is an absolute joke. The fact that we might not have even had Lonergan for this game was unreal. Um, I The defeat doesn't upset me at all. I thought we did well. Um, to get to the quarterfinal of the cup, considering the runs we've had in the last few years, I'm really happy with. The fact that we're in and around the top six around this time of year as well, with all the injuries we've had, with all the bad luck we've had with refereeing decisions too, don't yeah. forget what a season we've had so far. And this game doesn't change my mind about that at all. No, I completely agree. I was going to put on Twitter last night, we've played five Premier League teams this season and we've won four of them. We've got Leicester in a couple of weeks, so worst case scenario, we have a two-third win rate against Premier League sides. Yeah. For a championship team that's torn to shreds with injuries... And in them games, we I don't think we've played our full strength team. No, it's it's a great record, and I think it's a credit to the lads. It's a credit to Michael O'Neill, who I, I guess we'll get onto a bit later on mm. when we discuss 2020. But yeah, the, the defeat doesn't upset me, like you said. We played really well, and we were we were in it until the 80th minute. Yeah, yeah, we were. And you were just on about the Premier League record that we've got against Premier League teams think of Arsenal, think of they've not got that sort of record with all the riches they've got and the manager they're supposed to have uh, we have done incredibly well um, yeah. and we were in the game I think <laughs> it was my dad that said because we were watching it on Sky as I know you were too um, and, it, and he said we don't look like scoring at all and I said it only takes a minute to score a goal yeah. and then that ball goes over Brown puts it into the box, Thompson's there at the back post, and then it goes. And that is literally all you need sometimes. And even at 2-1, that's all it needed too. I think we had a couple of chances with people like Fletcher and Vokes had a couple of chances towards the end. Yeah. We really could have nicked something. It's just a shame that that third goal sort of killed it for the last 10, 15 minutes, whatever it was. Um, but yeah, we were well in there. Yeah, I think that was the main positive to take from the game. Um I mean, Thompson, I feel, is one of our more underrated players. And still people find a way to criticise him, which I just don't mm. understand. Um, he had a great game with Cousins in the midfield, considering, you know, their midfield, you know, Hoiberg, I think, yeah. one of the more underrated players in the Premier League. And then uh, they had Harry Winks as well, who's an England international. So, you know, they had a great game together. I felt the defence was good for the most part. Um, and I think for for their goals we just switched off. Yeah, and that's and that's how you know you score goals. It's either a moment or ma of magic, or you know a defensive lapse of concentration or a mistake. Um, but the three goals came from poor marking for the first one. Um, second goal was no keeper saving that. It was a great strike from Davies. And then the third one, it's Harry Kane. He's probably one of the best finishers in the world. 
you know, the last World Cup we played, he was the top scorer. Yeah, and like what? Sometimes you can't account for individual mistakes across the whole course of a season. I mean, there, there's nothing inherently wrong with what we're doing. You know, it's not as if our whole defence is trash or we're even playing our best players in their positions at the back. You know, we're, we're really struggling. Morgan Fox went off injured. That's another guy across the mm. back we've got injured. It's it's getting beyond a joke now. Whether that's an actual problem with Michael O'Neill's tactics because we press so hard, maybe. Maybe this is why we're getting so many injuries. Mm. Um, I don't know, because across the whole season, this season particularly, where, where it really is two games a week, that is tough on them, I'm sure. When he relies on the same team week in, week out, where he tries to anyway. Um, but yeah, as you said, it was poor marking for the first, a poor clearance for the second, and a poor pass mm. from Thompson for the third. And you know what? These things happen, especially against yeah. teams like that, that will punish you. You know, mm. the teams in the championship would have missed those three. I'm quite sure of that. But yeah, that's, what, that. That, 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 that's what happens against Premier League teams. They, We know for the fact when we're there for 10 years, they, they, they take their chances. Yeah, we have we gave Tottenham more of a game than some Premier League teams have this season. Yeah, and like they were top for a yeah. long time. It's only just Liverpool's starting to gain some momentum again. Like They're one of the best teams in England. And to put in a performance like that and, you know, give them a bit of the scares towards yeah. the start of the second half, got to be exactly. pleased with that. I felt the game went really well would have been even better you know, if Fox hadn't come off injured. I think no one was expecting us to win, especially at half past four when the teams came out and Tottenham yeah. were fielding near enough a full-strength team but Hume and Son on the bench. Uh, he came on. I felt, Tom, I felt Tommy Smith and Nathan Collins did well to just keep him quiet. Mm. Kane, he, if he gets a chance, he'll score. You know, it's, it's Harry Kane, but... We'll have to give credit to Andy Lonergan. First competitive game in, I want to say, over a year. Getting on two years. And he's pulling out a performance like that. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, he maybe looks a little bit suspect from crosses. This would be my really harsh mm. criticism. But I'm, but I'm only giving that because, to be honest, with the form Joe Bursic's in, it's unlikely that we're going to see him much more for the rest of the season. In all mm. honesty, Bursic should be available for the FA Cup. Um, when that comes around, so I'm assuming Lonergan will just be back up until you know the three other goalkeepers that we have maybe come back from injury. I don't know what, how long. I know it's a short term deal. I don't know how short term it is. Maybe it's literally when we declare the others too fit, they release him. I don't know. Um, either way, yeah, very impressive for a 37 year old. Um, mm. Some of the saves. <laughs> they were Unreal. they were excellent. Yeah, yeah. You can see why I was at Liverpool, can't you? Yeah. Um... There was, I think my pick of the saves was the one against Deli Alley when mm. he was one on one yeah. and just kept his legs just sort of there on the floor. Yeah. Um, I thought Deli Alley had a very poor game. I was quite shocked how bad he actually played. He was really wasteful with his chances. Yeah, but then how long has it been since he's played properly? Probably a very, very long time. Mm. So we know that with our players, they, they sort of come in from the cold and it takes them at least a couple of games to get going. Maybe he's just not hungry at Tottenham anymore. But then this is a Stoke City podcast, and we don't care about Daily Alley, right? No, we don't. Unless he comes uh, on loan to us in, uh, in exchange for Tyrese Campbell being injured. Well, I, I can't really see that happening. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I think more gutting thing would have been if we'd have just got past Tottenham, we'd have got drawn Brentford in the semis. And as we know, we've already beaten Brentford this season. Yeah. But then you never know what happens in the cup. We might have had an injury to Lonergan. Exactly. So you 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 just never know, and I, like I say, I'm proud that we got as far as we did actually, mm. and the fact that we're in the position of the league that we are too. No one can complain. A quarter final and in, in 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 the league cup when we've got another cup to go. You never know. We might mm. get even further in that one. Let's hope we do. Um, it w- it would have been nice to have got close to Wembley, but I think before this game in the cup, we hadn't conceded a goal, had we? Uh, no, we. That's insane. We'd only we'd only drawn against Blackpool and we beat them on pens and then won one nil against Wolves, Gillingham and Villa. I think that's probably what you're gonna go on to in a minute, the fact that O'Neill's just worked defensive magic. Mm. Especially against, you know, the likes of Aston Villa and Wolves, who have got some quality players. 
you know, Raul Jimenez, one of the most potent strikers in the Premier League. He came on, uh, they had Ollie Watkins just before he struck a hat-trick against Liverpool the following Sunday. Um, you know, they've got some good players. Had Jack Grealish been on for Villa, I think it would have been a different story. Um, but he wasn't playing. We got through. Um, so, yeah, the cup run, I think, has been a success. It's been a big learning curve. Well, a big. it's been beneficial, you know, because the likes of Sutar have got, the, got themselves into the first team because of that cup run. Um, I'm trying to think about Thompson, maybe, as well. Um, Tyrus Collins Campbell, especially. really playing Campbell, the full Exactly, you know. It's it's been a positive. It's given the youngsters some te- some good tests, and in the prem, if we were to go in the Premier League next season, I don't think we'd need too many signs. No, I I don't think so either. Um, a lot of people say that you know I don't want us to go up because we're not ready. Well, to be honest, Premier League starts in what August usually, so we've got ad- over eight months until the Premier League starts. Think of how much these young players are we ever going to grow. In eight months, I'm not saying that we are Premier League ready. We 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 certainly need a couple of signings, mm. um, and it and it's possibly really stupid and naive to be even talking about the Premier League. But in the hypothetical situation that we do get there, you look at some of the teams that are up that are up there at the moment. You can't say that we've not got a team to match some of those. In some cases, we're the fully fit squad, of course, being the caveat. I think. Yeah, I think. I mean, look how much some of these players have developed in the four months since pre-season started mm. you know Harry Sutar he was a little bit I think he was a little bit nervous mm. in the first couple of pre-season games that he played he was a little bit mistake prone but now you know he's kept some of the best players in the Premier League quiet for 90 minutes Bursic's an amazing example you think he conceded what three goals in each of his first couple mm. of games and then clean sheets across the board apart from one it- exactly I, I don't know what's what they're putting in the water down at the training ground, but these players are developing really, really quickly, and I hope that we can hang on to the majority of them. I do too. I, that is one concern if we don't go up this season, you know. Say, for example, Norwich get promoted, you know, if they need, they're need they in need of a, a towering centre-back mm. with high potential, you know, Harry Sutar is sort of wriggling around the top ends of that criteria. Mm. But then I think that we are a club that, given the money, we would reinvest that. I think there's some clubs that have sold their best players and not reinvested that money because that's their model. You know, that's how their owners make money. Our owners don't care about that. They're literally desperate for a chance to spend some money on some players. And I think by, I'm not saying it's a good thing that we sell our best players, certainly our young best players too, but it's not something I think that we would necessarily take disadvantage from if we recruited properly which can you argue over the last couple of seasons that we have I I think we've recruited pretty well when you consider it really I think the last couple of years in the Premier League weren't great they're awful whereas whereas now you know John Uber McCallan are free yes he's 33 but he's still a cracking player at the championship level Stephen Fletcher he's a championship veteran he knows the league um you know, you've got other players like Fox, who's done well, I feel, the last couple of games. Thompson's been excellent as well. Even Chester, really. I mean, I was quite critical of James Chester. Um, mm. But the last couple of... Um, and Well, if I had the choice whether we don't sign him on after his loan or we did, I probably would have said no. Whereas now, you know, I feel like he's him and Suta are our best centre-back partnership. Mm-hmm. In, in the club at the moment. And the thing is, I think the biggest compliment we can give that defensive unit is how the hell does Ryan Shawcross get back in this team? Well, unless we play a back five. Unless we play a back five or unless they all get shot down injured like like the rest of them have, I suppose. But, yeah, it's difficult. Mm-hmm. And then we've got the same argument for how's Joe Allen going to get back in? Well, at the moment... I. Don't me wrong, I think the likes of Tymon and Cousins and Thompson have done well. Mm. (sighs) Defensively, they're pretty good. Mm. I think offensively, we need more. We've seen that, I think. Um, Obviously, Campbell being out is a big miss. 
but we still got some heavy hitters up front and I think that there's a lack of service there to some degree and I think yeah. part of that is because of the lack of creativity when we have in midfield. Klukas, do you think, for example, he's created some of the most chances in the championship up, up until he got injured. Mm. Alan, we know how good he was under Michael O'Neill until he got injured. Um, and Mikel, I mean, for as much as Thompson and Cousins have done okay, Mikel's obviously a completely different kind of player and a completely different quality of player too with a different mindset for the team. Mm. And yes, we've kept a lot of clean sheets with those defensive players in the team, but I think maybe not, but you imagine at some point we will not be keeping that level of clean sheet and we're going to need some creative firepower and it'd be nice to have those guys at least available. Yeah. I think... The thing I like about the midfield, we can we can go attacking, you know, we can play Nick Powell, but then we can also sit back if we need to defend and Mikel plays that role just in front of the two centre-backs really well. How good would it have been if, for the Spurs game, for example, we had the likes of Jal and Sam Klugas in there and then we were able to bring in people like Cousins or Tymon mm. for the last couple of minutes just to ride it out? I think we'd have stood... St- We'd have had so much more of a better chance of going mm. through had we had some of our literal best players in the team. And I think we forget that sometimes. Yeah, I think has we had a full-strength team, I think we'd have kept that at nil-nil for a while. And I think the longer it would have gone on nil-nil, Spurs would have got frustrated, Jose would have got frustrated. And I think we could have ended up winning on penalties. Mm. I just hope that with all these players coming back, it keeps the dressing room happy. Mm. It's going to be tough, that. But it's it's a good headache to have. It definitely so, definitely so. Um, and, I, and I think as long as we prioritise some of the younger players ahead of some of the older players, then and, and we do it off form, and not just the fact that, well, just to keep a team consistent, as I think he has been doing. I think Michael O'Neill's squad management has been very, very good since he's come in. Yeah, we should be OK. So we'll, we'll move on a little bit now. We'll discuss 2020 from a Stoke perspective, Let's think back, oh, how many days ago? About 360 or so days ago, Mm. we started off the year at Huddersfield away, a relegation six-pointer. We won 5-2. Yeah. And we were behind at one point in that game. Yeah. And, you know, to look back at that and to look back at some of the results we've had this year, you know, we had a really good away win at West Brom a couple of weeks later. You know, nicked a goal early and then defended amazingly beat Cardiff we beat Hull um, and then obviously the lockdown happened and then coming back from that it looked like at one point we were going to go down and O'Neill's admitted that um, and then that Wigan game happened it was a, a terrible performance but then you know Barnsley at home we did what was ma- we did what mattered after that and we won 4 0, I think it was. And then from there, we had some cracking results towards the end of the season mm-hmm. and we stayed up with a game to spare. Yeah. Um, I think the back end of last season was good. There was a couple of little hiccups here and there, but it gave us the foundation. O'Neill had laid his foundations in the back end of last season, and this season we're going to start building them in. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to uh, get the first couple of walls down. Yeah, uh, and of course we didn't have some of the players that are staples in the team now. You know, we were relying on Lee Gregory up front at one point, and albeit he's a hard worker and 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 maybe a good presser, good hold up play, certainly not a finisher in my book. No. Um, and you know, we have to deal with that. And the fact that we were able to get goals out of him, I think, is a credit. Mm. I mean, he scored that goal against Brentford. Which was the one that massive kept us goal. up. Massive, exactly. massive goal. And you think, would he have done that 12 months ago? No chance. Mm. I mean, you know, Klukas was amazing after lockdown. He was, mm-hmm. again, he was great. Campbell was finding his feet, you know, sort of getting himself to what, uh, uh, to the sort of better plays in the first team. You know, Danny Bart was fantastic as well because he had that crazy goal scoring run didn't he mm-hmm. and then obviously Adam Davies made himself a staple in the first team so I think the lockdown period was 
something that was important to for, for building on to this season. Mm-hmm. I like. I was just going to say. I don't think over the last twelve months on the pitch we've developed much because I think we hit the ground running pretty much with O'Neill, and that's the first time we've done that with a new manager for ages. Um, even under Mark Hughes, we struggled when he first came in, you know. Um, but O'Neill's hit the ground running, and therefore maybe development hasn't been as radical. I think it was pretty instantaneous, but I think off the pitch, you think that O'Neill had some cojones to drop people like Ince and Butland, yeah. who were, you know, on big money, big names, and he dropped them because they weren't playing well enough or they don't care enough, whatever. I, I don't care what it was. Whatever it was, he had the balls to drop them out of the team. And yeah. it's for the betterment. You think Campbell is 10 times the player that we've seen Tom Ince. Um, Adam Davis has been 10 times the goalkeeper that we've seen from last season of Jack Butland, you know? Yeah. And those players are going to go for not much money. Butland went for a million quid. You, you imagine Ince at some point will be similar. But he goes, you know what, it's worth it for the betterment of this squad mm. and it's why these young players have developed because he's been able to go, you know what, these players, these well-known names and the team that were there, you've got no right to be in this team. You're mm. not a Premier League player anymore and these players unfortunately are catching up to you. Yeah, I think that was similar to sort of the first season we came down you know, we had a lot of big name players. We had Joe Allen in the midfield, Moritz Bauer at right back, mm. Butland in goal. And people were saying, oh, yeah, we're going to absolutely walk the league based on a couple of names mm. in the team. You know, I think, I, I, well, I'm going to admit I was one of them that said. I think we all were, because who, who said it? The club said that we should go up. We said that we should go up. The media all said that we should go mm. up. Any, any. Any betting site had his odds on to get promoted. There was no reason on paper why we shouldn't have gone up. But we know from even this season, look at Watford, who just sacked their manager. That is not how it works. Squad morale, squad confidence, squad togetherness matters. And we had none of that. No. We do now. Exactly. And it makes such a difference because this yeah. is the, the highest we've been in the championship. I mean, I think we were 8th or ninth Christmas 2018 just before mm. Rowett got sacked. Um, now we're seventh, but we're, we're getting good results. You know, we've only lost to teams above us, mm-hmm. above and around us. And I think it's I think it's brilliant. 23 clean sheets in 47 games this year. Exactly. It says it, it all. Exactly. You know, the defence, I think, deserves some real praise come the end of the season if we do keep that sort of ratio up. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I think attacking wise as well, we've done well. You know, we've we've had a couple of games where we have scored for fun. Mm. You know, look at Huddersfield, look at Barnsley, look at Nottingham Forest on the last day. Oh, that was great. That was that. But that's I think the the best point of the year. That Forest mm. game it was just so much fun because the pressure was off us completely. Exactly. Um, and we were just like, you know what, we've got a chance of upsetting a lot of Forest fans. And the mm. fact that we did, I know that Swansea play their part too, but oh my God, what a moment that was. Mm. I think it would have been even better with fans in the ground. Yeah. Because, it, because that, some of the bands that a, we would have had in the away end. It's That's just been the theme of the year though, hasn't it? I mean, the fact that the last game was a 5-1 v Hull, and that was back in March. What a shame, because... I mean, it's been a disadvantage for pretty much every team this season, apart from a couple of games here and there where fans have been in. Um, not saying it would have given us a massive advantage relatively to the rest of the league, because, like I say, everyone else has the same problem. But for us, I think I'd love fun we were we would have had this year. Yeah. It's such a shame. But I, th- I, I think and I hope that 2021, we will be back in the stadium within a couple of months. And, you know... It'll be bums off the seats rather than be bums on the seats, angry and depressed at the ground. I was I was listening to the the pot pot the other day that you were on, and you said you were you felt disconnected from the club, and I, I do have to agree with you. Like match days, I used to really look forward to. You know, I used to really look forward to putting my videos together and stuff, stuff like that. Whereas this year, it's just like flip the radio on it. 
two minutes to two. Yeah. Listen to it, praise and grumble, which I enjoy listening to, and then mm -hmm. turn it off when that's finished because, and then I'll just sit in my bed just listening to it. Exactly Whereas, right, and like things, things like praise and grumble, things like even podcasts like ours, right? They they are supplementary. They are nothing more. Like we couldn't do what what we do without Stoke and mm -hmm. fans, and the fact that that they are not a thing means that. It's hard for us to do our jobs. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we have done so and that we've sort of kept somewhat of the momentum going. But I couldn't blame some fans for dropping off this year and taking up new interest, to be honest, because it is very, very difficult to be motivating this whole situation. Yeah, I mean, when football got cancelled, I was just like, just sat there for a good two weeks. I don't think I uploaded for about a month. I was just <laughs> what like, do we do? what am I going to do? I've got no yeah. games to go to. Um, and then obviously, you know, you sort of work it out, don't you? You're sort of like, right, we'll do this, then we'll do that. And then the season kicks back in and you're like, right, I'm going to do this, this and this. But you don't actually do any of it. Yeah. Um, I think even after a couple of months, it was lucky that football come back when it did, I think. Because even Stoke had run out of ideas. They were doing really, really well, bringing out these, you know, match day rewinds and highlights of this, there and everything. And even Sky is sort of running out of ideas, and like it, it was just very lucky that the football came back in. Was it May, June, something like that? So we got middle of June. Better, very lucky. Yeah, exactly. I think it was a weird time for people as well because we were just starting to go outside again mm. for the first time in a couple of months. Had football not been there to sort of rein them back in, people would have definitely found new interest in that time. Don't worry. Yeah. I mean, I've, I'm going to be honest. I've absolutely hated the whole behind closed doors thing i just i'd rather I'd, I'd sort of rather have nothing than not go um because we were saying like some of the some of the moments we've missed like jacob brown's winner at wolves you know mm. that would have been you know beautiful mm. um the vokes goal away at villa um and then we would have had last night obviously as well two days before christmas um yeah it has been a shame to miss it but as you say the positive of hopefully next year we may have a home game to look forward to but before the end of the season yeah um, and I, I, and i think we've been lucky in the sense that because i'm i'm personally glad that stoke city's back and playing but maybe with a caveat that we're doing well maybe if we were down at the other end of the league and knocked out the first round of the cup maybe then we wouldn't be quite so grateful mm. I mean, I'm absolutely desperate to go a game. Literally, <laughs> aren't we all? <laughs> I mean, Itching. the top of my Christmas list was go a Stoke match. So, Come on, Santa. So, I, I can't guarantee that Santa's going to bring me anything because obviously Santa can only work so much magic. Yes. But um, yeah, it will hope hope that you know by spring maybe back in the ground. Yeah. So. Looking ahead to tomorrow, Coventry away. Coventry are in some all right form. You know, they're 18th, two wins, two draws and two losses. Uh, two two wins, two draws and a loss, sorry, in the last five games. They're doing all right for themselves, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be lying if I said I knew what a lot of the teams in the Championship were doing this season. The only reason why I know a little bit here and there about Coventry is because I work sort of locally there. Mm. And I think a lot of their fans have been a bit fed up, to be honest, because from what I've heard from some of the people there, they some expect them to go straight back down. Some of them expected to be saying, you know, oh, now we're back, we should be pushing for playoffs, forgetting that they're not the team that they are now and like they're not the team that they were. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a mixed bag from, 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 from Cov fans, as far as I'm aware. But having said that, they, they for a team there size and stature at the moment and the difficulties they've got going on with the ground and COVID as well. Mm -hmm. One of the smallest budgets in the championship. They should be just be happy with staying up and the mm -hmm. fact that they're at the moment doing so, good for them and I hope they do to some extent. Um, but the championship throws up surprises. Look at Hull last season. They exactly. were what? Eighth? Seventh? Got relegated? Rock bottom? Can happen. Yeah, I mean I'm friends with a Hull fan and I think that was just down to losing Grzycki and Bowen and yeah. just not replacing. Yeah. And then you're just chucking in a load of youngsters. Yes, it did work with 
Gareth Bowen. He doesn't work every time. No, exactly. I think we've got very lucky, actually, because um, I think if if Ince wasn't performing very well and we didn't have Campbell, who would we be playing on the right wing? No, no exactly. really. Brown, maybe, at the, the start of the season, but last season we'd have had, what, Gregory on the wing? <laughs> maybe. I mean, <laughs> difficult. I mean, I would have said, well, I was about to say for Linton, but I think well, he O'Neill was injured him, as well, wasn't he, of course? Well, I think O'Neill sees him more of a left winger. Yes, well, and, and maybe rightly so. I'm, I'm not even sure what footed he is, to be honest. He seems to be doing a, a lot with right. both. He's right footed. Oh, well, there you go. Um, um, but yeah, I'm impressed with Belinda now if he comes back, hopefully mm. for this game against Coventry, because he did 90 minutes for the 23s on Monday. Yeah, and Joanne got 75 minutes. 75 and an assist. Um, he got an yeah. assist. Yeah, well, there you go. I'm, 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 I'm not suggesting that he's back for this game, um, but people like him and Macau, just for squad rotation alone, mm. forget their ability for a minute, would be just so much of a relief. I think, yeah. what game was it that we played last before Spurs? I think Cousins was on the floor. Knackered. Uh, Blackburn. That's it. He, he he was just knackered, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. And I would be as well if I was him, having not played a lot of football in the last year or so, maybe even a couple of years, because he wasn't a really staple at QPR, was he? No. To be playing week in, week out now must be difficult for him. Um, I mean, I think the other day I was just going through some of my, 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 my notes on my phone, and I was just, and I come across my keep and sell list for the season. Oh yeah. Um, I'm, I wasn't going to say I prefer not to speak. <laughs> I may have had a couple of <laughs> players to sell that have you know been very good this season, like Josh Tymon and, and mm. Jordan Cousins were on that list. But then this is testament to Michael O'Neill. Nothing more. I think mm. yes, those players have had to step up and buy into what he's doing, but when you think of the amount of managers that we've had in the past and we're now looking ahead to Coventry and beyond and going, we need to be pushing for playoffs and beating teams like this with people like Jordan Cousins and Josh Tyron in the team, yeah. we wouldn't have been saying that 12 months ago. What a turnaround it has been. And it's all thanks to that man who, who drinks the whiskey, drinks the Guinness, hits the veil, right? Exactly. And the one thing we can't do at the moment is get too ahead of ourselves because, you know, Coventry... You know, it's it's a championship that anyone can beat anyone. And, you know, I'm sort of looking at that one, you know, as we've been talking, thinking potential potential banana skin. Yeah, but as is every game in the championship, we know that. We're capable of causing a few exactly. upsets, you know, and, and teams can do that to us. But I think our mindset for most games, maybe last season you mentioned Wigan, I think Leeds we fell apart as well. There's yeah. possibly been one this season. I can't think of the top of my head what it was where we just sort of didn't play very well. I can't think of many games in the last twelve Norwich. months where we've done Norwich like maybe Norwich or Cardiff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't sit back at a lot of games and go, you know what, we actually played really poorly today. Can't think of many at all. I think I could probably think of maybe in one of the nil nils that we had the other week that we weren't great, but and even then, it's a clean sheet. Exactly. And considering we didn't have Campbell, and I think that's why we fired blanks in those earlier games, is because we didn't, we d- we sort of didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Sort of a bit like a rabbit in the headlights. Where's Campbell? Where's creativity going to come from? Mm-hmm. And I think Fletcher did struggle in those couple of games as well. I think for Linden was bright when he came on at QPR, mm-hmm. uh, and do hope to see him featuring one of these Christmas games um, against Coventry and or Nottingham Forest. Um, mm. I wouldn't want to see him against Bournemouth because Bournemouth are a different team. Mm-hmm. And I think just to bleed him in a little bit against one of the lowest one of the lower sides in the championship. And then if you want to play him against Leicester, you can. Mm. Because Bournemouth are a very aggressive side and I don't think another injury is what the Linden needs. No, absolutely not. We've got to be protecting these players now. And as I mentioned with O'Neill's pressing, he's got to be careful, you know, because the squad is getting really, really thin now. Across the board, all positions are getting really, really thin. So whether he adapts his play style, maybe to the detriment of results, I don't know. Um, But, yeah, we're going to really see how... I've always said with a manager, because I think of... 
uh, Ale Gunnar Solskjaer when he first joined United and he was winning all these games and it was going ever, ever so well for him. People said, oh, give him a new contract and all this. Then it turned a bit bad, didn't it? He sort of lost a few games and you know what? United went to crap after yeah. all that. I wonder how O'Neill will react if we have three, four losses on the spin. Are we just going to completely capitulate or is he going to recover? It'll be really, really interesting to see that. That's the one thing I don't think we've seen him have yet. Mm. Let's find out. Well, I think under O'Neill, I think we're winning. Well, last season we were winning sort of one in three mm. and then getting maybe a draw in there as well. Because yep. we had an all right run between sort of mm. Christmas and the first lockdown. Well, towards the end of the season, really. So if you look at those last 10 games, it was only really Leeds, Brentford and Forest. In, yeah. And then we had the sort of, we had sort of a, a nice period and then it really turned itself on. Birm- Birmingham was a banana skin, but we dealt with it well. We avoided it. Um, so, yeah, I, I, to be honest, where you're saying three or four losses on the spin, I touch wood, I can't see that happening under O'Neill. I hope not. I, I really, really hope not. Um, as I say, it might take an injury to somebody um, for that to happen. I hope, again, that this doesn't happen. Um, but we'll see, I suppose. And I'm sure you're going to come on to what I think for the rest of the season. It's going to be all right, as you say, I think. I think for the rest of the season, I think well, this, this actually sort of brings it on nicely to the to sort of the end of the podcast. Is where do we think, well, Christmas Eve... We're recording this Christmas Eve, 2021. Where is Stoke City going to be? Are we going to be in? A, are we going to be a Premier League team? Oh, are we going to be? That. Have we have gone one step further in the League Cup and we are looking forward to a semi-final in early January, or are we just going to capitulate and be out of the League Cup first round, finish bottom half? What does Ben think 2021 will bring for Stoke City? I'll, I'll do that. Oh, okay. Stoke City this time next year. I hope between the FA Cup that's happening this year and the League Cup they're having next year, we go to at least a quarter final again. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't necessarily think of Wembley or anything like that, but I think we've got a good squad. And, you know, so long as we get a couple of home ties and some, some lower league teams. Yeah, I, I think we could have another cup run out of the two we've got this year. League is difficult. I think we'll be pushing for automatic promotion next year in the championship. I think we're going to miss out this year. Not because we don't deserve it. I think we probably will. But we may well do a forest or something similar, you know, where eventually something is going to give. I'm not yeah. saying that we've been lucky this season, but something is going to give. Yeah. And uh, I really, really hope we go up. I'm not one of these that thinks we're not ready yet. I think we are. Um, but I think even if we get into the playoffs, we're going to fall foul. Mm. Um, I don't think clean sheets are necessarily enough to win you a playoff game. You need to be a good offensive team as well. Um, and if Campbell really is out for the rest of the season and we don't bring in a replacement, that's what it hinges on, to be fair. What yeah. are we going to do in January? And we don't know that yet, obviously. If we manage to bring in someone like Delap, Liam Delap, obviously, not Rory. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if we bring in Liam Delap or somebody of that ilk who's going to replace Tyrese Campbell in the short term, excellent. We've got a real chance of making the playoffs. Um, but again, I don't think that this is the last we're going to see of injuries. And it only takes an injury to Harry Suter, who's been phenomenal this season. Yeah. It only takes a an injury to one of our goalkeepers, who that we've already got, you know, like a reoccurrence of what they have, mm. maybe a setback in training, anything. And I think it's likely for us, for the way we play and for the amount of players we've got left. But having said that, next season we should develop really well. I think mm. the young players are going to push on this year and 2021 is going to be a big year for Stoke. And I think next season, we should be looking at, provided we do all the right things, mm-hmm. we should be pushing for automatic promotion next year. Yes, I somewhat agree. 
I think January, as you said, is going to be a huge month because if we fail to replace Campbell with quality, you know, Liam Delap, I think, would be a perfect sort of player. Um, I think we're looking into the likes of, uh, I think it's Sherwin Seydorf. Mm -hmm. um, looking at, I can't remember his first name, but Dembele from Peterborough. Mm -hmm. Very, very fast player. I think if we bring in a player like that that has got quality, I think we should be there or thereabouts. Um, if we were to get into the, well, actually, before I move on to that, Liam Delap has already scored against a championship team this season yeah. in the cup for Man City um, against Bournemouth. So, you know, that's Bournemouth. There's no mm -hmm. reason why he can't do it against the lower teams that we should be beating. Mm -hmm. And then potentially either, well, if he grows that much, rely on him to get the goals against the big teams or rely on Fletcher. And then beyond January, I'd rather spend the last 10 minutes of the season in the playoffs than spend the next five months in there and drop out for the last minute, like what Nottingham Forest did. I'd rather do a Swansea than a Nottingham Forest, obviously. Um, pros and cons to going up this season. I don't think we'll go up through the playoffs. I think there's going to be some very good teams in there. I mean, Watford... Uh, Bournemouth or Norwich will be in there. You know, there's some good championship teams like um, Reading, who've done all right this year. Swansea playing some great football at the moment. Middlesbrough always a hard team to beat if we uh, get them Porter cabins back. Um, but yeah, I think I don't think we'll go up through the playoffs. Do I think not going up this year is more of a positive? Maybe because it gives them youngsters an extra year to develop until they're very much so Premier League ready you know Sutar mm -hmm. is already showing Premier League qualities same with Collins Bursic is in there as well and not to mention Campbell as well I think Valinden would benefit off another year in the championship uh, Thompson too uh, maybe Josh Tymon as well so I think that's what we probably I think in the long term I think another year down here would be better off because mm -hmm. then I think if we were to go up this season I think we'd struggle to stay up next season mm -hmm. um, I mean look at Sheffield United mm. you know, look how you know they, they had the foundations last year but it's all gone to pot this season mm. you know Premier League's not an easy league to stay up in if you get your foundations and basics right it is it's a it's a great great time you can have a fantastic year up there I mean we can replicate what Leeds have done, fantastic, but I think we'll end up following the similar fate to Norwich last season or West Brom this season, and we will struggle. Beyond that, I think, as you said, automatics is very realistic. I think Sheffield United will come down and finish mid-table, so we don't have to worry about them. Um, all depends on if Arsenal get relegated, really. <laughs> that would um, be good fun. They struggle, I, think, I reckon, you know. I mean, because a lot of I, their players are going, and they don't like teams like us. Teams yeah. like us down in the championship, they struggle. Exactly, I think they would. Um, I mean, money doesn't buy you the championship, as we found out a couple of years ago, and it does catch teams out. Um, so yeah, I do think we'll sort of be in and around those automatic places next season, sort of similar to where Bournemouth or Bournemouth are now. I don't think we'll be runaway winners. I think that'll be the team that doesn't go up through the playoffs or Fulham if they come down. Mm. Um, and then if we can just sneak into those automatic spots and we go up um, in 2022, um, I think... It's like it, a long time away. Might, I think it, might be in the stadium by then. <laughs> well, hopefully. Um, if we go up in 2022, I think we'll be there for... A very long time, longer than the first spell, if we get it right, and if O'Neill stays on, because that is another important thing. Mm. But I don't think O'Neill will leave until his project is finished, and I think under O'Neill, I think this is where we'll leave it. The sky's the limit. Mm. Well, let's hope so. And you know, we predicted quite a lofty things for Stoke, but I think it's right that I make it clear that I certainly don't expect us to be in that position no. you know it, i i i believe we will 
based on the trajectory that we're going off. But I, it's not an expectation of us, and I wouldn't be disappointed with this season a season of transition and progression, as I think we are seeing. I'd be happy we are, you know, if we finished exactly where we are, even a couple of places lower. Um, and then the the season after, you, you know, anything could happen. If we were in the playoffs or just outside, I wouldn't be disappointed. I'm actually learning to like this league now, where yeah. I think I was seeing this league as, you know, this this pit that we need to get out of because the Premier yeah. League's the place to be. It's not that really. It's quite a good place to be. Mm. You know, it's getting more coverage all the time. There's some good teams down here. Some some good days out to be had. Yeah. And you know, I don't think that we should be too keen on waving goodbyes to the championship. No, I was I was going to say because like I'm I'm a ground hopper. I like taking off my grounds, and another year to get some more away games under my belt so I can go to teams like Luton and you know some other grounds in this division. Mm-hmm. You know, wouldn't be a bad thing, but that's me being selfish and wanting to <laughs> stick off the championship. Um, but for the good of Stoke City, I do think another year down here would benefit us more than going up and yo-yoing for a couple of years. Mm. It's a vicious cycle once you start yo-yoing. Yeah. It, no, it's, it's true. It's true. So, um, go on. No, I was just, like I was just going to say, sorry, I think we caught oh, yeah. a little bit there. Um, just want to say that I think through all that we've missed this year, what is football for, really? Like winning and losing, yeah, it's good. Promotion, yeah, it'd be nice. Winning a cup would have been great. But you know what? I I would fully take going back into the stadium and having a team to be proud of again. Yeah, That's all I want for next year. Yeah, I think the positives of sort of some behind closed doors games, I'm not going to say all behind closed doors games have been good, but you know, games like Wigan and Middlesbrough and potentially Leeds during lockdown, I think they would have been very toxic. Because mm. um, you know what Stoke fans are like. Mm. You know, we're passionate, but when it doesn't go right. I mean, look at the Sheffield Wednesday game last year. Mm. Mm. You know, that got very toxic at one point because we but were then, losing. I think, I don't know, we might be going up at a bit of a different tangent here. I think sometimes they need that because mm. look what happened. You know, yeah. I, I think sometimes the players can get too comfortable and they need to kick up the backside. They need rewarding when they do well. But I don't think... I'm not one for saying that booing sometimes is all that bad. I mm. think sometimes they need a little bit of like, you know what, we really care. We actually make you. We're the ones that enable you to do what you do for a living. Mm. C- come and put on a show for us. Don't sit yeah. there. Some Sometimes we are very impatient. And I think under people like Gary Rowett, we, we absolutely were very impatient mm. and very entitled to being promoted. But like I say, that Sheffield Wednesday game, they needed to cook up the arse and they got one. Um, but as I say, I think the mood will change amongst Stoke City fans, partially because we're doing so well now, yeah. partially because we'll be yearning for it. Yeah, I think that first game back, hopefully, I'm, hopefully, you know, I'll be there to see it. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a really special day, you know, because, yeah. I mean, look at some of the fans that have been back already. You know, there've been some great moments for them. Mm. I mean, look at Crew; they've had a couple of late winners the last couple of weeks. Um, but when it's our turn, it's going to be it's going to be brilliant. And what would you rather? Would you rather us get back in the stadium earlier with a couple of thousand fans, or be forced to wait until we can all go back in a few months later? Oh, how many more months? Wait, are you talking next season? Say we could go in in February with two thousand. We have to wait till next season to have the full thirty. Well, if if we go in in February, you're only going to get one or two games, really, aren't you? Yeah. Because the amount of demand that will be for those exactly, couple right? thousand tickets. Yeah, but how desperate probably... are you? That's the question. I'm desperate. But... <laughs> but would you rather wait until it's a full house? This this is my point. I think that first game back will be. Brilliant, but I'd feel bad for uh, the vast, vast, vast majority of Stoke fans who unfortunately will miss out. Mm-hmm. I think the first game back will be this season, but see, <laughs> oh, it's such a tough one. 
See, um, if, it, 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 if it helps, me personally, or if you get the chance to go, I'm probably going to take it. Yeah. But I would be preferred to force to wait until we can all go back, mm. if I'm honest. Just because, yes, it'd be nice to go back and see a game of football live, but just like it has been right now, when we were yearning for football to come back on TV, it's not going to be the same. With mm. masks and social distancing, not being able to hug the person next to you when we score a last-minute winner, it's going to be different. And even though I'd love football to be back, and like I say, I'd probably be first in the queue to yeah. go back in a, you know, in a, in a COVID secure stand. Um, yeah, I'd I'd actually rather as wait. Yeah, I think I think for the benefit of two or three games, if that at the back because we don't play many home games and I think we only missed four home games yeah. after lockdown so I mean really there's only surely like 10 or 12 left exactly and by the time February rolls around we, we'll probably have six left six to eight left yeah I agree with you exactly so, so I mean would have rather missed two home games to go <laughs> the rest till the end of time obviously yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah let's hope 2021 brings some happy times on the pitch and off the pitch in the stands in an away end you know going down seven rows of seats when Tyrese Campbell nets a winner in the 2022 playoff final that's what we want yeah oh just imagine I'd have been very annoyed if we'd been at Wembley and we couldn't go I think a lot of fans would have been. Yeah, I think but, mm. depending on the, the situation around London, I may have gone down to London for the day. <laughs> and then just get a massive step ladder. <laughs> just peek, just peek you need a big one at Wembley. <laughs> uh, just climb up the arch. Yay. Um, but yeah, hopefully 2021 brings some happy times for Stoke. And, um, and yeah. It's, it's, I think on the whole it's been a good year we've seen some real progress and um, here's to a happy, successful 2021 for Stoke City with yeah. fans in the ground at some with point fans in the ground. I agree with you I think 2021 is going to be a good year 2020 has been a really important year I mm. feel it was sort of a do or die year mm. and we've done so I, I think yeah, next year we should build on this and become a real force in this league again mm -hmm. completely agree with that and some great words there from you Ben um, this, is a, this is of course the Christmas special so I hope you are all having, well this is going out at some point on Christmas Day so I hope you are having or had a great Christmas I hope you have a good Christmas Ben as well cheers for uh, taking the time out of a busy day in the calendar, Christmas Eve yeah and no before, you're welcome and before we, uh, we go I'm going to let you shout out your stream next week. Oh, bless you. Right. So, um, for anyone who doesn't know, and to be fair, it might be a fair few of you, um, on the 29th of December at 9am, I'm, I'm going to be starting a 24-hour live stream. Um, I'm going to do 24 one-hour interviews with Stoke fans, Stoke staff, Stoke personalities, basically. Um, I'm raising money for the Stoke City Community Trust, in the meantime, there's a fundraiser going on for that. Uh, that's at 82% of its total at the moment, and we've not even started the stream yet. I'm really, really happy with that. Hopefully, I mean, if we can hit the target before the stream, perfect. But I'm really hoping that with the stream, we can beat that target. Um, but to be honest, it'd just be nice to be able to do something during a time where people aren't able to do very much at the moment. Um, got a lot of people involved. You, yourself, Harvey, are coming on to, uh, to do a... Uh, the first half of a watch along for the Forest game. Um, I think it's the Forest game, isn't it? It is the Forest yeah, game. It's the Forest game. Um, other people coming on. Merriman's going to do some music. Steve Hunt from the Community Trust coming on. Uh, so many names I can't think of. Um, you, you guys will be either watching this or seeing this either on or after Christmas Day. So there might be a special boxer that's coming on as well. And uh, not giving any names away. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but. Yeah, it, it hopefully is going to be a really good day. And I don't expect anybody to tune in for the whole 24 hours. But if you are interested in watching or donating towards the uh, the stream, if you Google live, that's L-Y-Y-Y-V-E, it'll come up with 
links to my website, to the fundraising page, and you can watch the stream on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Yes, I will leave a link to the donation page and your social media and Spotify all in the description. Thank you very so, much. Uh, hopefully that uh, helps you out with raising a little bit of money. Yeah, for a very you. good cause, I think. I think, you know, chari- it's been a tough year for charitable organisations and I think, you know, fair play to you for 24 hours. I'm going to need some caffeine. I mean, <laughs> I was doing a watch long last night and I was struggling after two hours, so... <laughs> hopefully the first game's a bit more entertaining, mate. Well, hopefully it's a bit of a, a goal fest or, you know, a late winner would be nice. Get that adrenaline going into yeah. the middle of the night. But, uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, Ben. I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas. Don't forget Ben's links are in the description. And, yeah, here's to a hopefully successful 2021 for us all. Happy Christmas. I'll see you guys in the next one. Go on, Stoke.